A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet Williams steam locomotive, part 56. I have most of the parts to complete the sandal tank, but unfortunately I have one vital part missing. Recessing one of the safety valve washers in the lathe using a boring tool. This clip shows a saddle tank upside down on the bench. And I was wondering what the gaffer tape or duct tape marks were on the top part of the tank on the inside. This saddle tank was bought from the steam workshop and it's ideal for this locomotive. Regarding the dry adhesive marks on the inside at the top of the tank, as a guess, I would think that the filler cap was originally gaffer taped inside the tank, but then it got lost. I'll be making a new one very shortly. I bought several packs of silicone sealant. In case anyone watching this video is curious why I bought the silicone sealant in small tubes, instead of buying a single large tube, well there's a reason for this, it's accessibility. When I fit the middle part of the tank, I'm going to be using this, and because the tubes are small, they are much more manoeuvrable, and I should be able to get a thin bead of silicone rubber sealant all the way around the edge, as well as applying some of it around the blocks inside the tank. These arrived in the post this morning, some 5BA bolts, or machine screws, or whatever you want to call them. They are of the countersunk type, and I bought plenty so that I had them in stock. This pack contains 100 5BA by half inch screws. The other pack contains the smaller 5BA by quarter inch variant. I can't help but notice how well this tank is made. Not only is it held together by quite a lot of nuts and bolts, it's been caulked with soft solder. What is the part that I need that I do not have? This is the balancing pipe, and I need to fit unions to this, and then the unions will connect it to two fittings, one at each side that I need to make. The fitting that I need to make has to have a thread to fit these nuts. They are 9 sixteenths by 26 threads per inch. I need to make a special threaded union to fit the holes at each side of the tank. The problem is I do not have a 9 sixteenths by 26 threads per inch die. Thinking about the job, because if I get these simple parts wrong, it's going to cause a lot of problems for someone in the future. This is a commercial 3 8 by 32 union. But the more I thought about making a larger version of this and then bolting it through to the inside of the tank, the less happy I became with doing it that way. I'm going to do it a better way. It's more complicated and I will show it in a future episode. It would not be good if the fittings in this tank were to work loose over time. And there are some other reasons that I will cover when I make the parts. Often these larger fittings do not use tapered cones. This is a fitting on a piece of 3 8 of an inch diameter pipe and as you can see it is flat. And this would be no good on a union fitting like this even if it was the right size. The vital part that I need which is a 9 16 by 26 threads per inch die should arrive in a couple of days. In this clip I'm showing the parts on the bench that I was thinking about modifying and fabricating, but I changed my mind, I don't like to bodge things. What I have in my hand is the thread from a broken globe valve, and there is of course an option of cutting up this T-piece, but I really don't want to do that. So there's not much more I can do today with the tank, I will have to wait a couple of days until the part arrives. Time to carefully place the saddle tank back on the floor and then put these parts somewhere where I won't lose them. When I made these stainless steel washers to tidy up the top of the firebox where the fittings go, I didn't realise that all the boiler bushes were not exactly the same length. The middle one stuck out of the boiler just slightly more than the rest so when everything was fitted together it didn't look right. Luckily it's a simple fix, I don't need to do anything to the boiler all I have to do is just recess the centre washer. Why the messy felt tip pen mark? Well, it's just to show you where I'm going to recess it. First of all, I need to position the part in the chuck jaws very accurately. I initially hold the part firmly in the jaws and press it into place with the tailstock chuck. And after a quick spin of the chuck to verify that it's accurate, I tighten the chuck jaws a bit more. This is a piece of stainless steel and it doesn't take too kindly to be turned by a very thin spindly boring tool. 
I'm only taking fine cuts because the part is not exactly held really tightly in the chuck. Here's a second cut coming up. When I finish the recess there's a sharp edge and the quickest way to get rid of this is just to touch it with the end of the tool like this. After the machining operation I can now fit the washer and fit the safety valves in position. It's not obvious in this clip, but believe me, it is not sticking up quite as much as it was. The second safety valve screwed into the hole with more difficulty than the first one. I'm really having to grip it tightly. I used a large barcode spanner to tighten the safety valves and the turret into the correct positions. Because of the copper washers lifting these fittings, it doesn't look perfect, but it's a lot better than having them just sat on the mess at the top of the firebox. That's all I'm going to do for now, it's time for me to go. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.